I've told this story before, but I'll tell just a quick version of it because I'm so close. Um, I had met a, a lovely young lady in New York City, and because um, I had been on a date with her roommate, and her roommate pointed at the picture on the wall and said, oh, you're going to love my roommate, Erica. And I was like, oh, that would be awkward. And it turned out that was actually true. It was awkward. Um, but a week later, I was in London, and so was Erica, and she, uh, you know, she and I hung out together, and she had a boyfriend, and I think technically she was still married to her first husband. Whatever, I'm just saying, I was like third. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't on deck, I was in the hole, as it were, as if we were talking baseball. Not... <laughs> and so... My brother-in-law is, a, is a, also a Cleveland guy, obviously, and has the filthiest sense of humor in the world. So I really appreciate y'all. I think there's something about growing up in this town that makes you just really love just filthy jokes. <laughs> so my, the funniest people I know are from Cleveland. But anyway, so I spent a week in London with this girl, and she was super nice, but you know, it wasn't like, it was just platonic, obviously, because of all the complications and stuff, until it wasn't. And we hung out at a Robin Hitchcock's house at a backyard party, and it was super romantic, and everybody there had an English accent, it was super cool. And they kept saying, uh, oh, you're, you're such a lovely couple. We're like, well, we're, we're not really a couple, you know, I went out on a date with her, her roommate, and, um, you know, just the whole story. <laughs> but, uh, in the taxi home, we shared a taxi, even though she was staying in way north London, and I was staying in Wimbledon, and it could be, it was like a $400 cab ride, but that was the only way we were going to ever have the, the conversation that we had to have, which was, holy shit. And, um, so she told her boyfriend... And she told her roommate, although I did offer to tell the roommate. And the boyfriend actually took it better. The roommate moved out, but um, but it was pretty great. And, and we sort of, it took a while to get everything sorted out and then we could actually have our first date. And, um, and then that was it, you know? And then I started coming to Cleveland for Christmases and hanging out here and uh, rooting for the Browns. And then we moved. We moved in together in Manhattan, and then we lived right by 9-11, and then that happened. And after that, we had no home, so we actually ended up moving back here and living with her folks in Brunswick for a while. And it was during that time that I had been awaiting the delivery of the engagement ring that I had gone out in Los Angeles and designed. And um, I was able to catch them before they shipped it off to a fucking post office in New York that would have been closed for like three months. And I got him to reroute it to Cleveland, and um, and it got there, and everything was so weird. And it was one of those things. I was glad I'd already, you know, figured out ahead of time that that was the decision because I didn't want to be like, you know, like all the 9/11 babies, like, oh God, the world is ending. We better go do it. And um, <laughs> I'm sure that happened. <laughs> but so there, there I was, homeless in. Uh, you know, late September of 2000, no, 2001, and I went out on a walk with Erica after having breakfast made by her great-grandmother. Not her grandmother, my kid's great-grandmother. Anyway, this really old lady, this whole Hungarian lady that I was hung around. And, um, and so we went out for a walk, and there on the corner of Ptarmigan and Old Eagle, which are two real streets in Brunswick, um, I finally got up the nerve and I got down on one knee and I pulled out the ring and she was shocked and I proposed, I got the words out in the right order and everything. And, uh, and she stood there and she looked at me and she looked at the ring and for I swear to God like 11 minutes she did not say a word. It was very uncomfortable. And finally I said, so uh, are you gonna answer? And she shook her head and she was like, Oh, okay, and yeah, and so she agreed to this, the terms of my negotiation, and, um, <laughs> and it was 
was sweet. It was great. And now everybody's moved out of Brunswick and the family all day live out on the East Coast on the beach because they got old and they hated the cold and all that stuff that happens. And we live up in New York, but we still come here all the time and I still root for the Browns. And I still, yes. And I still, every time I think about how weird it is that human beings can fall in love and decide to go into this, this legal binding agreement, I think about how it felt to get down on one knee and just realize that uh, that, that was like actually a real thing. That love is a real thing and it's not a legal binding agreement. It's just it's just a decision that you don't want to be alone and you figured out how not to be alone with this other person. Anyway, thank you all for being here tonight. I will be stopping in Brunswick tomorrow to go drive around and look at the old streets. So if anybody knows of a breakfast place, please send it to me on Twitter. <laughs> Say yes to what's in 